And you've got a lot of choice as you walk into your retail store this holiday season. You've got a lot of different options, a lot of different screen sizes. And in these videos, it's increasingly becoming less and less of this phone's better than this phone and more and more of what's most important to you. Is it screen size? Is it battery life? Is it you know A, B, C, and D? And if it is, this is gonna be a unit for you because unlike 2009, it's very much an equation now. You have gotta determine what's most important to you and I'm gonna try and help you do that at least with the LG G2 in part two of the full video review. Before we get too far into that, I wanna thank my partners at Best Buy Mobile. They give us devices like this for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game, which is our free game where we give you free phones on the site at phonedog.com. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll get your apps, your widgets, all your contacts and everything set up. So when you walk out the door with your G2 or your Moto X or Galaxy S4, you'll walk out working thanks to Best Buy Mobile. So jumping right into part two, giving you a quick spec recap. Be sure to watch part one, but giving you a quick one. Got a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 CPU here, a 5.2 inch 1080p HD display on this device, 13 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD recording and optical image stabilization. You'll also notice volume rocker, power button on the back, much ballyhooed. We'll talk more about that in part two. This is the unlocked version, so it's only running on HSPA+, Plus, but you will have 4G LTE on the carrier versions of this device. And actually, they'll be different in terms of overall design depending on which carrier you go with. For example, Verizon's we know is gonna look pretty substantially different here on the back. Whereas AT&T is Sprint's, at least from the press pages and the press images, they look pretty similar to the stock version. So we'll wait and see how those look and we'll have more in-depth coverage on the site as those launch. But Android 4.2.2 here, Snapdragon 800, as you can see, this phone runs incredibly fast. You got no lag on this device whatsoever. Very pleased with the overall speeds. So if speed's important to you, you want that zippy device, zippy fast as I like to call it in videos, the G2 could be an awesome contender for you. And I think 5.2 inches, it's a little bit on the big side for some people, but from a content consumption perspective, YouTube, listening to music, downloading stuff, browsing the web, this could be a great device for you. And speaking of browsing the web, we're gonna jump right in and take a look at phonedog.com. Now you'll notice out of the box here, I installed the Android keyboard. I happen to find that to be my favorite keyboard with the exception maybe of HTC's stock keyboard. I think LG's keyboard, and I'll show it to you just so you can see the difference here between the two. And I'm gonna to have to go into settings to activate LG's because I do want you to see it. But honestly, and I can't talk and type at the same time. Let's see, keyboard, am I missing it? Yeah, language and input, there we go. And we'll go to the LG keyboard. We'll make this the handwriting style word suggestion. Let's take a look here, for example, at a message, just so you can see what that keyboard looks like. And we'll go into Google, we'll change this to LG. And you can see that very much like Samsung's keyboard, you've got a stock number row up there so you can access your numbers quickly and easily. I will say this, it's better than previous LG keyboards. The quick brown fox, happy that it is Tuesday. Quick Brown Fox is happy that it's Tuesday, but again, portrait of the landscape, you can see how fast this device runs. LG's keyboard, I do like the fact that the, num uh, the number row is up there at the top. Still, I prefer the Google keyboard over LG's keyboard. Personal preference there, you may love it. And you're also noticing probably as we're running through these applications, these little icons right here. This is the Q slide icon. So much more, actually I'll go down here and move this around much more option when it comes to, or higher option rather, when it comes to using QSlide in various applications. We saw this obviously on the Optimus G Pro. It was a little bit more limited than what we saw. And I'll show you this as well. A little bit more limited on the Optimus G Pro. You've got a ton of different options here. Now multitasking is a little bit different on this device than it is say on the Galaxy S4 or the Galaxy Note 3. Very different all around. Instead of having them in kind of split screen options where you can move the split screen up and down, these kind of sit on top of each other as you can see here. And you can access them. You can make them a little bit more transparent or less transparent as you see fit. And then you can pop them back when you want to into the full screen. But I can run a bunch of different things simultaneously here. I can access this keyboard, I can keep typing, and when I'm done, I can just exit out. And like I said in part one, you've got your cue slide shortcuts up here. If you want those, I happen to keep them turned off because I like the space in the notifications area. So a cool little feature there, again, multitasking, very much a user preference kind of thing. You may like the Galaxy Note option, the Galaxy S4 option, where you've got the split screen and it's a little bit more organized. That said, you can run a bunch of different stuff here at once. As you saw by my video, I can run that, I can run the internet, I can run messaging, and I've got all these things pulled up, I'm sorry, two at once. And then of course, I can expand this out. For some reason I thought it was three, but I guess I could be wrong. I'm wrong often. Dial, and then I can move this around if I want to and change the size, and then web, I can move back and forth between them, but yeah, a little bit less organized as you can see 
from my demo here. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard as well and see how it performs. Very fast device here, Snapdragon 800 CPU, two gigabytes of RAM, very zippy all around. What I will say though, I've been incredibly impressed and granted this is not the 4G LTE version, so take it with somewhat of a grain of salt until we get the carrier versions, but I've been exceptionally impressed with battery life on the LG G2. This packs, at least this version of the unlocked device, packs a 3000 milliamp hour non-removable uh, non battery. That's hard to say when you don't have a lot of coffee in your system. 3000 milliamp hour non-removable battery, and I've been exceptionally impressed with battery life. Not only does this thing charge fast, but it lasts for a long time as well. I've had no issues making it through the day. I can get easily about 18 hours on this device, 20 hours depending on my moderate to heavy use case scenario, depending on in other words, where I'm at throughout the day, if I'm in meetings or if I'm harried and on the phone. And we'll go ahead and do the benchmark results here so you can see. 20,182. 20,182 in Quadrant Standard is great again. Take it with a grain of salt. Quadrant Standard is not always indicative of day-to-day -day performance. But you can see here, I mean, this phone's exceptionally fast, just running through basic stuff, pinch to zoom, running through my applications, accessing my widgets. No lag whatsoever on this unit. So not only is it fast, but the battery lasts for a long time. So I like this phone for a couple of different reasons. One, it's fast, the specs are great, the battery lasts for a long time, and this thing is still pocketable. So you know, you miss out a little bit when you go with like a Galaxy Note 3 or an Optimus G Pro, because they're just big devices. They're hard to fit in the pocket in a lot of cases. And if there were a trade-off, and there is for a lot of people, for example, with the S Pen or some of the content creation stuff that the Note 3 and the Optimus G Pro have, there may be a benefit for you. But for me, I want a device that's kind of powerful, that runs really fast all throughout the day, that has a decent camera. But most importantly for me, because I'm on the phone on a regular basis, I wanted to have a great battery. A great battery and a great screen are really my two requirements. And this thing with its 1080p HD display runs circles around some of the other devices on the market. Really impressive there. Specs are fast. This thing's still pocketable. So even though it's got a big 5.2 inch display, I can still fit this in my pocket and not feel like my pants pocket is bulging, which is a nice thing. 13 megapixel camera here with optical image stabilization, just going in quickly so you can see what the overall interface looks like. I've got my gallery down here as you would expect. Took pictures of a squirrel at the office the other day and you can see right here. Let's zoom in on the squirrel. And that is the squirrel. And we'll go back here and take a look at the camera application itself. Flash as you would expect. Switching to front facing camera, you've got all your mode options here. Dual camera, hello. No, let me show that again. And so you can use the dual camera option if you want to. We've got a couple of different options, very, very similar to the Galaxy S4 here. Oval blur, instant heart shape, all the different options that I can do. Fish eye, star shape, split view, instant. And then of course I can come up and switch those around if I want to, just like that. So kind of a cool little feature there. I can move it around on the display if I want to. Pretty easy. Settings down here as well, shutter sound, volume key, can capture as well, so I've got my volume button back in the back that I can use, so I can wrap my hand around the device and take a picture, for example, of my computer keyboard. And just by pressing the volume down button, I can use that, as opposed to actually tapping on the screen or hitting the camera button. Burst shot as well, night mode, dual camera, panorama, you've got a bunch of different options here, and then within settings, the typical stuff, focus, image size, color effects, white balance, all that stuff, from here. I've been pretty impressed with the camera. The optical image stabilization works quite nicely. And I'll bring over the Moto X here, which is going to be blue on blue, but it's okay. We'll go ahead and bring over the Moto X. I'm going to focus in on the Moto logo so we can take a picture of that. Really been impressed with the image quality on this device. Very, very nice all around. And then, of course, with the dual shot options or the dual camera options, rather, it brings a, kind of a Galaxy S4 esque feel to it where you've got those camera features. So it's not like the HTC One or the Moto X where you feel like you're missing out on some of those premium camera features. You've got those over on the G2 as well. So love this thing in a lot of different ways, but as always, it's going to appeal to what's most important to you. So for example, if your battery life's most important to you, this is a great option. If you need the ecosystem of Samsung, obviously this is not gonna be a great option. If you like the overall look and feel, I will say durability wise, a little bit concerned about one thing. I dropped this device on day two of owning it, and it wasn't a hard drop. It was more of a face down drop, and it didn't balance, it didn't do anything, but I'm surprised to see that there's a ton of scratches over here on the side of the display. Very concerning considering, you know, most people are gonna drop their devices over the course of two years. This was one drop, not seven, not 10, one drop. And I'm already seeing that kind of damage to the overall display. A little concerned about that, but overall, I love the feel of this device. It's thin, it's light, it fits well in the hand. This is really cool to me. I love the volume rocker and the power button on the back. It does not scuff with the camera as you would think it would. Don't get fingerprints on the camera. And there's actually a special thing on the camera which keeps quite a few of those fingerprints from attracting. 
and then up top you've got your IR blaster for watch on. So, or excuse me, not watch on, for a quick remote. I have to get the product names correct. How dare me. But you can see here a lot of different features packed into this device, and it's coming to the four carriers, so it gives you an option outside of the HTC One, outside of the Galaxy S4, and outside of the upcoming Galaxy Note 3. And LG's back. And that's an awesome thing. Really a nice device here, but as always, it's going to depend on what's most important to you. I will say, as a phone, great unit. Volume rocker, I mean, excuse me, the battery life is great. Signal strength indicator continues to work well. Signal strength has been great in the Dallas metro area. I've been pleased all around with the G2. Keep it locked on phonedog.com for more. We'll do dog fights between this and the Galaxy S4 and this and the HTC One and this and all the other high-end devices, Moto X, for example. So keep it locked right here on phonedog.com. I'm on Twitter at phonedog underscore Aaron. Let me know what you want to see as I continue my 30-day challenge with this device. I'm getting down and personal with it as we go into this 30-day challenge of me using it as my personal device. So let me know. Twitter at phonedog underscore Aaron. Facebook, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker. Thanks for watching. More to come on the G2. And as always, I'll see you next time.